the end of last week, on the 6th of August, Tony Jutt, a famous historian, died. If you read his obituaries, it, they say that he was one of the most lively minds in the whole of New York, and they describe his books and his successes as a historian. What the obituaries don't say is that he was a great fan of periodic videos and also one of my oldest friends. He and I started university on the same day. We had rooms opposite each other in the hostel where we lived, and he was one of the first people I met when I went to university. Later on, I was best man at his wedding. He tied a rotten fish to the engine of my car when I got married, and then he went off to become a historian, and I went off to become a chemist. And then two years ago, just about the time that we launched the periodic videos, Tony was struck down by a terrible illness, an illness that in English is called motor neurone disease, and the United States, States is called ALS, or Lou Gehrig's disease. And this is a disease which causes creeping paralysis, first of your legs and then of your, of your arms, so that you can't move at all. You can still think as well as ever. You don't feel any pain, but you're trapped in your, whole bo your own body. And many people, when doing this, when faced with such an illness, would have just given up. Tony started writing more articles, wrote a whole book dictating it with the aid of a microphone to somebody who wrote it down for him. And he also watched the periodic videos. Nearly every week, or more than once a week, when we launched a new video, he watched it and would send comments to me. He was particularly excited when we went to Turin to make videos about the chemist Primo Levi, because some years before he had written an article about Primo Levi, Tony liked the photograph of me standing in Primo Levi's lecture theater in front of the periodic table. He said that if you looked at it from the middle distance, I looked a bit like Primo Levi, with glasses and grayish hair. Though I have to say that Primo Levi's hair was rather more well-behaved than mine, but that's probably an advantage. Tony was a bit bemused by why chemists liked explosions. And he wrote to me a rather interesting comment on the video on fluorine, which we released recently. He wrote, took me a while to understand its use and value, except as a flamethrower, but now I see. You throw it a bone in the form of some atom or other, it is content, and then it's domesticated. I think that's a really lovely picture of how to understand chemistry if you're not a chemist. Now, Tony was not somebody who wanted others to mourn and be sad at his passing. So I think this is really a good opportunity for me to use my zirconium vodka glass and to pour a sample of the Mendeley vodka and to drink a toast to the memory of Tony. And I think there's a lesson in all of this for us, because Tony shows that however clever you are, however much you know, there's always new things for you to learn and more useful things that you can get out of life. We will miss him very much.